Welcome to Highline BI 348 class video number 55. If you want to download this workbook, BI 348 chapter 5 and follow along, click on the link below the video. Now last video we talked about naive average all pass values, moving average and exponential smoothing for making forecasts. In this video we're going to do a quick example of each one of these as a summary on a different data set. And this data set has what looks like a horizontal pattern and then a jump because there was a new contract signed. So this data set is different than the one we had last time. So let's go ahead and remind ourselves. Naive just means, hey, we're always going to look at the actual value from the previous period. Let me copy that down. We can come all the way down to the bottom because I'm going to forecast. Now watch this. It replaced the formatting, so I'm going to click on the Smart tag and say Fill without formatting. So then the forecast becomes, hey, I'm looking at the previous period. Now we want to measure the forecast error here to gauge how accurate this method is. So we're going to use our array formula for calculating mean square error, sum product. And we need to take the actual values, not all the values, just the same number of values as we have forecasts. And what do we want to do? We want to subtract the forecast. Now this array operation, one column minus another column, if I were to highlight this and hit the F9 key, that gives me all the actual forecast error, Control-Z. In order to get mean square error, I have to, of course, close parentheses and square it. The sum of it then needs to be divided by, and I'm going to use n minus k, but I'm going to just going to count because n minus k is really just the number of forecasts. Now, I'm going to sort of cheat here. I'm going to close parentheses, and I'm going to notice that I want to calculate the same mean square error for each one of these. But this blue range, the actual values, I need to lock that. So I'm very carefully going to highlight the B5 to B27 and hit the F4 key. The rest of these I'm going to leave relative cell reference. So as I copy it over, the orange will move to the new forecast method. Now when it gets to this column, we're going to have a slight problem. But instead of recreating the whole formula down here, I'm just going to adjust the ranges. Now I'm just going to enter it right now and leave it there, all right? That is the mean square error for our naive or forecast method. Now averaging all past values equals average, and we use an expandable range. So I click in only the first actual value. I type a colon, close parentheses, and then I lock just the first cell reference. So when I hit F4, that locks down that 4, but not the second 4 in the range. So that 4 is allowed to move to 5, 6, 7 as we copy it down. Control Enter. It gives us what's called an expandable range. At any particular cell, I can hit F2 and see that it has expanded. The 4 is locked, but that number in the second B cell reference is not locked all the way down to the bottom. That is just beautiful, an expanding range. Now I'm actually going to highlight this. This is super annoying. That is called an error checking, and it's not smart enough to know this. This formula is working. It says omits an adjacent cell, which is the one at the top. Forget it. Ignore. Excel's not smart enough most of the time to check for errors. Now I actually forgot. Let me copy this one down here and point to fill without formatting. So there it is. There's the forecast. Now I'm going to copy this over, hit F2, and notice we have the exact same number of forecasts. For, so this formula works perfect for our second method of MSE. So far, I'm thinking I like the first method better. Now we mentioned this in last video. If we do have a jump, naive forecast picks it up quickly, right? The averaging of the past values is not going to pick it up quickly because it's still hanging on to all of the, the values. If I look right here, this method's still hanging on to all of the values from the earlier part of this time series, not the later part. The most recent catches it. However, there will be a better method than most recent. Well, at least we hope when we do our mean square error. Now, moving average, we're going to do a moving average of 3 equals average. 
And this just means I'm always going to look at only the past three values. Now, conceptually, if you're looking here, right? if we're over here, it's already looking at that value, that value, and that value. So it's starting to pick up the jump more quickly by only averaging three instead of all of the past values. Now, those are relative cell references, so Control-Enter. When I copy it down all the way down to the bottom, and I'm going to point to the Smart Tag and say Fill Without Formatting. It's got the same problem. Excel error checking is not smart enough. You want to know something? What do you really do with error checking? You say Error Checking Options. And then down here, you say Uncheck Enable Background Error Checking and click OK. You have to do that not for the particular workbook, but for your particular computer, whether it's at work or at home or whatever. All right, so we have an actual forecast of 691 for period January 2016. Now, when I copy this formula over, I am going to have a problem, F2. But notice, we know how to deal with it. It's got everything correct. It's just a couple cells off. So I'm going to point to the corner. When I see my diagonal cursor, I'm going to click and drag. Diagonal cursor, click and drag. And then I come over and click and drag. So I want exactly the same. Boom, boom, they're parallel. Control, Enter. And that, so far, is definitely looking like the smallest mean square error. Now we still have one last method, exponential smoothing for our time two. We're just going to look at the first one, Enter. And then from that point forward, we're going to wait. We're going to look at. This is time period three, so I'm looking at the actual value for time period two, relative cell reference, times the smoothing factor. That's custom number formatting there. That's actually a number in the cell point four, which will work perfect. F4 to lock it. So we're weighting this value at 40% plus the previous forecast, relative cell reference, times in parentheses one minus F4 close parentheses, that's times the complement, Control-Enter. And I'm going to, let's see what happens if I double click and send it down. And then I'm going to go down to the Smart Tag and say Fill Without Formatting. So we have forecast for January 2016 of 700. Now, I'm actually going to cheat. I'm going to copy this one and then paste this one right here because it has the right range. F2, I can see there it's working perfect. And sure enough, now we can compare for this particular data set. Then we have minimum mean square error for our exponential smoothing. All right, so in this video, we reviewed naive, average, all the past, moving average, and exponential smoothing, and looked at mean square error to pick our forecast method. Now, when we come back in our next video, we're going to talk about using linear regression for forecasting. All right, we'll see you next video.